The Patia City Expats Club is a non-profit social organisation and our speakers are volunteers. The club as such assumes no responsibility or liability for the professional reputation of or the quality of services provided by the speaker today. Anniversary of being in business in July this year, big achievement. Most of the local newspapers have gone bust or gone online. So uh, yeah, we'll, he'll be coming in to give a talk around then. But get on the Pattaya mailing list and if there's any article by a Mr. Barry Kenyon, make sure you read it. And he's also put his hand up uh, when we need, you know, to give us updates on what's happening with visas and stuff down the track. I've, I've already done that, Brad. <laughs> So um, now today, when we come to Thailand, we have all sorts of ambitions, right? What we're going to do with our time in Thailand. After we've been here for a while, we soon realise our number one ambition in Thailand is never spend even one night in a Thai jail, right? That our, becomes our number one ambition. Who agrees with me? <laughs> because it, because one night in a jail in Australia isn't isn't the the horror that one night in in uh, Thailand be, and it's easier to end up one night in a jail in Thailand than it is in certain other countries. Correct, Barry? Oh, there you go. Person, personal ex personal experience. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, so Barry's here to help us stay out of trouble with the law and stay out of Thai jails. Barry Kenyon. Well, give him a big, big warm welcome. That way. Okay, can hear? Good. Good morning to you, and thank you for that uh, introduction, Ren. The thing you didn't say was that I'm well past my sell-by date, uh, so uh, um, that, uh, please be... So the sheet in front of you is actually, if you've got one, there are a few extra here, is really uh, to keep me on the straight and narrow and stop me from wandering. So if you find it useful, good. If you don't, you've done me a favour. Thanks. That's okay. We're looking today at the law, mainly criminal and a bit civil, and differences from uh, European and American and Australian traditions. But first, just a couple of uh, overall contextual points. The Thai government does not issue detailed criminal statistics, so nobody really knows um, how many people are arrested and for what. It's largely a matter of... Uh, uh, guesswork, although we do know that there's about 300,000 people at any one time in Thai jails, of which about 4 or 5 percent are foreigners, so 15,000 uh, or so wouldn't be a bad guess. But many of those are waiting in the immigration detention center in Bangkok for someone to pay for their air ticket to go home. So the whole subject gets, uh, you know, pretty complicated about numbers and uh, we, we, we can't really get into that because it's just a matter of opinion. Uh, the next contextual point is when I look round the room today, I think the chances of many of you being arrested or jailed is very small indeed. Most of you, including myself, are the wrong shape. I notice also that, you're, uh, that your age is wrong, you should be younger. You've got you're the wrong colour, most of you, or all of you, actually. You probably have the wrong visa. People with retirement visas are notoriously law-abiding, actually, statistically speaking. And so um, most people who are arrested in Thailand don't look remotely like you or me. However, I was arrested in the year 2016, so you can never be too sure, hence the reason for today's talk. One of Adolf Hitler's predecessors as uh, Reich Chancellor in the 19th century was Otto von Bismarck. And he said one of the, I think, most relevant things about the law you can ever say. He said that the law and sausages have one thing in common. It's better not to know how they are made. And I think that probably sums up about the law. The more you know about it, the more worried you become. Nonetheless, on we go. 
So what are foreigners mainly accused of in Pattaya, where there are a lot of them? Nothing specific about Pattaya, it's just that it's a tourist town, that's all, like, like Phuket. Most people who get in trouble with the law here just pay a fixed penalty in this or any other country. Parking on yellow lines, unless you do it too often, you know. Um, speeding, unless you do it too often and too fast. Overstay visas for a short amount, all these kind of things. Um, not reporting your address on time to the immigration. All these carry fixed penalty offences, and we're not mainly concerned with that because once you've paid, there are no further consequences. The biggest reason why foreigners are arrested in Pattaya, particularly, I think, um, uh, Europeans, Australians and uh, Americans, to judge from the fragmentary evidence we have, is alcohol. So as soon as you meet a breathalyzer <coughs> and you pet test positive, you're likely to be in trouble. The idea you can buy your way out of it, forget it. Once you're in the police station, you'll go through the bureaucracy uh, like everybody else. Um, another issue connected often with alcohol is drugs. Um, they too often go together, not necessarily in a traffic offence, of course, uh, and, and the, the, the decriminalisation of um, cannabis, or provisional decriminalisation of cannabis, doesn't mean to say that most drugs are acceptable, they're not. Still vast numbers of arrests for trafficking and, and possession of methamphetamines and uh, cocaine, ketamine in particular. And so you have to uh, be very careful, I think, of alcohol mixed up with drugs. The trouble with alcohol is that it often leads to another offence, such as injuring someone or killing someone. And now this is when you're in real trouble. There is no way now of escaping the consequences of that. Uh, and it's really rather elementary advice, but don't drink and drive is probably the most important thing that any of us can do. Next on the list come immigration offences, of which the most common to be arrested are significant overstays. It's difficult to say what a significant overstay is, because it depends how they find out. And it also depends whether you've done something else, as often you have, and that's the reason why they catch you. But basically it's three months. Up to three months, it's not normally so significant. Uh, and these numbers are going up all the time, we think, uh, the numbers of people arrested for overstay. Does this mean that people are getting more villainous? No, I don't think so. It reflects, I think, the improvements in police technology, particularly the technology that enables your mobile phone to be tracked. Uh, you'd be surprised uh, what they can do these days, even when your mobile phone is switched off. In some cases, it doesn't always prevent the location being disclosed. And so, um, you may have read this week on an unrelated matter that 100 or more Russian soldiers were killed in occupied Ukraine when the Ukrainians fired rockets on a military headquarters. And sadly, it's a very sad business, I know, but 100, at least 100 Russian soldiers were killed. How did they know? Because these Russian soldiers were using their mobile phones. Mobile phones means these days that you can be uh, tracked a lot more closely than most people with a mobile phone. Uh, seem to know. So I just point that out to you about overstay is getting easier to catch because of technology. The other main reason why people are arrested is uh, working illegally without a permit and the numbers of those are going down. Does this mean that, well, I think they're going down anyway from the evidence we have, uh, does this mean that people are getting um, more moral? No, I don't think it does. I think it reflects the fact that in 2017, in a rather unpublicised uh, move, the uh, king, Rama X, the current king, amended by decree, without, through, without it going through parliament, some minor changes to the Alien Labour Act of 2008, which said that nearly anything was illegal, a voluntary work of any kind, painting in neighbour's flat, you know, even painting the front door, feeding the cat while they were away. Anything could be construed as illegal. And this has been changed now um, in a minor way. I don't want to spread the idea you can do anything and get away with it, but it has been changed in a minor way by a royal decree. 
So if it's not systematic, such as one time dressing up in drag at your local pub, if any of you do that, I think one of you does, the one over there I've seen, or if you uh, want to um, you know, participate in a, 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 a condo management committee, something like that, or if it's uh, um, a, a matter such as just one-off uh, helping out a neighbour, uh, things like that, you may well find that the police don't, the immigration police or the labour office police, there are actually labour office police as well as immigration police onto this, they tend not to be uh, as concerned as they were. So the whole thing now about illegal working is, is it systematic rather than a one-off? But there are very few cases since the King uh, amended the uh, law in 2017, so we don't really know. But I just point out to you, in general terms, odd things that used to happen on a one-off basis uh, tend not to do now. The key is systematic. Playing the piano once in your local pub, may you'll get away with. Play it uh, every uh, Saturday for six months, you'd have a problem. And of course, it doesn't matter whether you're paid or not. The alien law legislation goes on about uh, w voluntary or paid work because either of them could take work away from a Thai, and that's the key, Thai national. That's the key thing that they're looking at. You move on to um, the next category, violence and assault. Um, many people get arrested for that. It's often alcohol and drugs come into that. Domestic discontent, uh, people fighting. You read about it on the uh, social media uh, practically every day. Um, the key to those cases is medical evidence. There's no point in you saying that I've beaten you up if you go home and sleep it off. You've got to get medical evidence unless you're in hospital or you're dead, something like that. You've got to get medical evidence if you're on the defensive side of it uh, in order to impress the court. Um, Another area where foreigners, it's been mainly Chinese recently, and also some of these schemes are based in Cambodia, fraud, telephone, boiler room scams, mafias, robocalls. The general idea of these is that somebody rings you up, you give them your telephone, by telephone your bank account, they raid your bank account and you end up without any money. That's basically the idea. You do have to be careful now, I think, of receiving phone calls. I got one the other day, to give you an example, from someone claiming to be from DHL. And they wanted to know if anyone was in. They really wanted to know when anyone wasn't in in order to come round with a non-existent package. I had nothing due for DHL, nor had anyone else in the house that I live with. So that was clearly a scam. A clever one, designed to find out when you're not there, not when you are there. The same thing can happen with repairmen too. So be on your guard against that. The next, uh, not many foreigners uh, of your type or our type uh, get arrested for that, boiler room scams, but they were quite common in Bangkok run by Europeans 20 years ago, 10. You don't hear much about them now, it seems to have been mainly Chinese and Cambodia. Gambling can be an area where you can roll into trouble, can be online gambling. You'd be surprised what can be illegal. I'll refer briefly later to some Australians who were betting on horse racing in a bar and didn't even know it was illegal. And of course, casinos. If you go in a casino, that's silly. I mean, casinos uh, here are uh, rather drab affairs, you know, in which uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of bars are changing hands, and yet when the police raid it, there's only 20 bars in the kit kitty. You know what it's like. Sexual offences uh, are partly pornographic. If anyone offers you 10,000 baht for appearing in a pornographic movie, don't do it. Uh, although looking around the room, that's not too likely, I guess. <laughs> or more seriously is, of course, the issue of child sex. And the number of prosecutions for that have declined steadily over the years. Over the years, people say is that because there's a shortage of pedophiles or whatever, no, it's to do with the fact that the pickup joints that used to exist for child prostitution in uh, Pattaya were long since closed down, bars, clubs and internet cafes. That's the key reason. Where it exists now on the internet with massage parlours sometimes, you'll soon find that the police are, are onto it pretty quick and closing them down with prosecutions. 
those are the main reasons why you can be arrested. I'm sure none of them apply to you. If there is a problem for you or a friend or someone you know, it's important to recognize that the Western system of justice is rather unlike ours. It's unlike the one here. I think you know something of this, but just to run through it, there are no juries here. Not that I'm personally convinced that juries are all, always what they're cracked up to be, but you could have a long debate about that. Most of the world don't use juries at all, but it's debatable, I think, whether juries are. Is it easier to corrupt a judge or a jury? Well, there you go. Language, of course, it'll all be in Thai. You can have a translator, but you'll miss a lot. Bear issues, bail tends to be harder here than in the West, but not that much harder. And of course, they have penalties we don't have, and offences we don't have, such as less majesty, uh, offences against the uh, talking or writing against the royal family, or of course, they do have the death penalty for murder here, but it's very rarely enforced. They stopped machine gunning people in 2003 here, replaced it by um, the uh, uh, lethal injection but in the last 20 years there have been seven executions so uh, it's largely reserved it seems f for particularly uh, gruesome murders of children and the like the procedures here are very different from what you'd find in the West when you start a case in the UK say you expect the uh, the, uh, the judge and the jury to go on hearing it until it's finished day after day. But here, after about half an hour of the first hearing, the judge will uh, say that's the end for today and he'll agree with the prosecutor and the defense for the next meeting that might be two months down the line if you're unlucky. Cases can drag on that for a year here, just in the first court, let alone worrying about appeals and the Supreme Court, if relevant, not the Supreme Court won't hear some cases, but it can drag on years if it's serious. You can also note here that the Thai courts are not adversarial. That is, in you watch TV programs, you see in America the prosecutor and the defense attorney arguing like buggery, right? And they're demolishing each other's witnesses. That, that doesn't happen here. It's non-adversarial, largely because they don't have to impress the jury at which these antics are largely played. Judges are not influenced uh, that way, or tired judges are not. It tends to be a much calmer affair in which both sides take their case, ask each other, questions, uh, certainly, but without the sort of uh, furor that you get in the West, and you can explain that easily enough. There is no transcript actually word for word here either. After about a quarter of an hour, the judge may speak into his dictaphone and giving a summary, a close summary of what's said, and that becomes the official transcript. All these things are different from the UK or the US or Australia, and this is where sometimes people become, you know, confused because you can only judge the world from what you know, not from what you don't know. And the, the law probably in Thailand may come under that category heading. When you come to penalties, it's almost impossible to say because for many reasons. Uh, uh, courts here have enormous um, uh, discretion uh, about what to do with you, whether to fine you or do nothing, find you not guilty. Uh, give you a suspended sentence, um, give you community service. You know, it's only one of many options going to jail. And often the Thai laws are based in such a way that any of these penalties are possible and not much notice is taken of precedence. There's a lot of emphasis in, in uh, American, in particular courts, on precedent. Ah, oh, this happened in 1928 and so-and-so happened. That tends not to happen here. The judge hears the evidence and makes up his own mind. I'm not saying precedent never comes into it, but not nearly so much as it would do in the UK. Often there's more than one law can cover an offence. A good example was the other week on the social media. People were laughing that an unknown foreigner had sex with a Thai lady against a lamppost, I think. I don't know whether they were stood up or not. It didn't go into details about it. They, they, they were, they, police were looking for a foreigner having unauthorised sex in public with a Thai lady, and it said on the social media, the fine is 500 baht, <laughs> laughable. But you see, that depends uh, whether the police, if they'd ever caught him, would have prosecuted under the, uh, under the uh, Public Order Act, 500 baht. But suppose they prosecuted 
under the conspiracy to corrupt public morals legislation, which they could have done, the, the penalty could be five years. So, you know, you have to be very careful in Thailand against assuming there's only one law. Uh, prostitution, for example, is, is governed by at least 16 different laws, all of which are in force, dating back to the uh, Entertainment Venue Act of 1960, which forbade all prostitution in any f shape or form, irrespective of the circumstances and the age. Well, that's not too widely enforced, is it, on the walking street? Yeah, some areas of the law change as well, so there may not even be a prosecution. A good example of that would be not wearing a mask. You know, we heard a lot about 20,000 baht, you remember, a few months ago, if you didn't wear a mask. How many prosecutions were there for that? Well, my contact at the police station says there were none. So, so there you go. Another uh, area is digital nomads, if you know what they are. People who sit on the beach and earn a profit by using their... Uh, uh, computers to make money in one way or another. Is that illegal? Probably it is under Thai law, even if your income's from abroad, no one's very sure. By and large, if you don't take a job from uh, a, a Thai with being a digital nomad, uh, not much seems to happen, but it could start tomorrow morning for all I know. So it, you've also to be aware in Thailand and any other country, I'm sure, what laws are actually particularly flavor of the month. I remember 22 years ago where if you dropped a cigarette, I smoked at the time, I don't know, if you dropped a cigarette on the street, a man came up and said, that's 2,000 baht, you know, they were called fags police. And so, so, you know, things come and go and you've got to bear in mind that too. You also have to be aware that, that the, both the immigration police and the court can be involved in deportation orders. We haven't time to go in a lot into deportation orders, uh, but uh, uh, it's a complex matter, but for, uh, usually through the court. But the immigration, if they wish, can revoke your visa for, um, for no reason, it's up to them, at any time, anybody in this room, unless maybe you happen to be a permanent resident, those are the people who don't have a date in their passport about when their visa finishes and have a red police book. If you've got one, maybe you're an exception, very few of them. But uh, the uh, deportation by the immigration can occur instead of taking you to court. They have a look at you and if they're not sure or they think you might die in police custody because you look very sick, uh, the last thing police want here is someone to die in custody. The forms you have to fill in are like that, you know, they don't want to know. And therefore, uh, sometimes you can have a deportation order issued against you. Uh, it means you have to get out of the country uh, quickly, which means you've got to have someone to buy the ticket quickly, rather than go through the judicial process. It's not usual. Uh, most people uh, would have to go through the judicial process. It is a form of judicial process anyway, being deported. And while you're waiting for the air ticket, or some someone to pay for it and possibly pay a fine, you'll probably be in the immigration detention centre in Bangkok, which if you have any knowledge of, you will know you don't want to visit under any circumstances. I've already mentioned the fact that there are um, in the Thai jails about 15,000, but not, not sure it means a lot for reasons I explained earlier. There's more to the Thai law, of course, than criminal cases. There are also civil cases that is where no criminal penalty is involved. These tend to be <coughs> mainly areas like wills. The importance of making a will, everybody and every lawyer and every visa agent tells you to make, to make a will. Um, it, but it needs to be a good will. Uh, I've seen a good many that uh, you know, have errors in them, like formatting errors. So that one witness has forgotten to sign, or even worse, I saw one the other week, where the two people have both been left the same motorbike. It, it mentioned, you know, the, it was like King Solomon. He, didn't he cut the baby in half and gave half each? Maybe you have to do the same with the uh, motorbike. Very odd. There are also uh, probate issues with wills. What you say in a will, if it's properly drawn up, is very important, but it can be challenged, particularly if there's a big family and they think they're being uh, duped, uh, they might take it to court. Uh, and of course, you will have, if you're the executor, have to go to court just one time 
in an undisputed will uh, to seek probate from the Thai court, everyone. That's usually okay. I'll give you a tip, if ever you have to go to the Thai court as an executor to seek probate, to open bank accounts, make awards and so on, you do always need uh, to know what is the family tree of the person who's died. That may be easy, it might be your brother or your mother, I don't know, but if you, you, you sort of, you're not so sure, try to find out before they die. Judges in the Thai probate court, not that it's a separate court, any judge can do it, but it's a probate matter. The judge will often ask, who were his relatives, you know, who was his mother and father, and has he, are there is anyone else not mentioned in the will? It's often just for formality reasons, but if the answer is, I don't know, you know, it's not such a good answer. So, family tree, I don't know what the Thai is for family tree, but uh, it often comes up, I've noticed, in civil cases. Not always controversially, sometimes the judge will accept. If you're someone without any relatives, as I am, in the sense that they've all died or they were killed in the war, in my case, many of them, uh, then you make it very clear in the will that you uh, don't have any uh, rel blood relatives insofar as you are aware. I have other people who'd like to inherit what I have, but they're not blood relatives. The next area is divorce. Um, this can be uh, straightforward. Uh, or it can be problematical. Uh, you will be asked if you are married typically to a, a Thai spouse at the uh, registry office, if you got married in Thailand, I'm assuming you did for this purpose, there are other complications if you got married abroad. If you get married here, you can, the, uh, the officers in the uh, Naklua registration office award divorce will want to know if you reached agreement with your wife about the division of assets. It's not a question of, yes, this is yours, that's yours by law. There's a good deal of uh, soft turf in the middle and you have to reach an agreement. If not, then uh, it could be difficult. It's no point in going to the divorce court until you've reached agreement unless you intend, the, the divorce, sorry, office, uh, unless you intend to go on to the court. Also, where there are children involved, in a, di in a divorce, this can also lead to complications about who has custody rights, who can see, just as it can in every other country. But it's not, it's complicated, it's easy here to get divorced for a foreigner, less easy for two ties, easy for a foreigner, but not if there's somebody saying, I don't like this. You know, the issue is, is there amicability about it? The most recent thing that's causing Thai lawyers to rub their hands with glee, of course, are the prospect of gay marriages that are coming up maybe sometime next year, or perhaps gay civil unions, because they're going to break down as well, just as straight, straight marriages do, and therefore there's going to be a very lucrative uh, legal income for lawyers sorting all that out if it ever happens. Some assaults go to the civil court, especially if someone's seeking compensation. Criminal court won't give you money for being beaten up, uh, but the civil court can, if it wishes, award compensation. Its only job is to award compensation, not to, uh, uh, to, to, do, to retry the case. Um, the problem with the civil court is, if, it, if I beat you up, and the civil court awards you $100,000. Oh, you just sit back and wait for the check to arrive? No. What happens if I don't send the check? Well, then nothing happens. You have to go to the authorized agent who are called execution of justice officers. Uh, they are bailiffs, more or less, with offices on Deposit Road. And they are the ones who will attempt to find some property of mine uh, in order to recompense you, a um, bit like the British system. Not so easy, the obvious thing that they can get is your car. But mine's 15 years old and needs a new engine, so I don't rely on that. Moving on now to falling uh, victim to a crime. It's worth mentioning that you're often the innocent party. Street crimes, domestic violence, if you're murdered, it's too late, but you can be a victim of all these crimes. Um, and. Some of them are 
uh, 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 are proper crimes and some are invented, I think. I'm always a bit suspicious when I see people again and again and again going to the police station and saying, just, I was walking in the, on the beach road at four o'clock in the morning and I was wearing this incredibly valuable diamond ring and somebody stole it, you know. I, uh, there must be insurance scams, I think, linked to some of that. But that's not to say there aren't many street crimes and you certainly have to be careful. There's not a lot I can say about that other than go to the police station and take it from there. Ignorance of the law is a common response by people in any country, not only Thailand, saying, I didn't know. Uh, two or three years ago, I think before COVID, there was a group of 10 Australians who were sat in a bar just off the walking street, not in it, and they were enjoying on international TV watching horse racing in Australia as it went along. And they were betting on it. Australia, uh, on an Australian race on international TV, and the uh, the barman was taking the uh, uh, the, the money and, and paying up, and so And unfortunately, the police happened to stop by, and of course, that is illegal. They were gambling. The fact you weren't gambling stuff in Thailand isn't the point. You were gambling. You know, clear case of where international gambling can be illegal. At the end of the day, they weren't too harshly treated. They were just allowed to leave on their holiday early because, you know, it wasn't an unusual case. But ignorance of the law is not really, won't do you uh, uh, a lot of good. Um, um, it's, not, it's not a defense under Thai law. One of the more famous uh, cases of rather unfortunate arrest was the one I was, the one I was involved in in 2016 in Patia Bridge Club, which just rented a cafe, as it were, in Tepesit Road, uh, Tepai Road. And with, unexpectedly, 30 people were uh, arrested. Should have been 32. Couldn't understand what had happened to the other two. It turned out later they'd hidden in the ladies' toilet. Pretty clever, that, wasn't it? Yeah. And the average age of these people was 72, including me. I was older than that at the time. Two ladies over 90. But we were all arrested, and the police were not present. The police didn't agree that we should be arrested. They know the bridge club for 20 years. It is registered. We've had visits in the past from them, and uh, they, they know what, what the bridge club is and what it's not. It's not a gambling den in any way, nor does money ever change hands, nor is there any monetary reward, etc., etc. But the civilian licensing office, DOPA, the Department of Provincial Administration, which licenses clubs, societies, that kind of thing, they have arresting rights and they use the army who also can arrest people in addition to the police. So DOPA and the army will do to arrest you, don't need the police. But once they've arrested you, the police have no option but to welcome you into the police station. They, they can't say no just because we didn't agree with it. You, they have to go. And we were locked up in a huge room. We couldn't all fit in the cells. They were busy that night. They'd just been arrayed on transvestites, so they were full. We were there for uh, 11 hours. At the end of that time, you know, you, you, you're ready to be released, as you can imagine. At about 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock in the morning, they did... DOPA decided that they wanted the prosecution to proceed and so we were all told to sign this piece of paper in Thai which says you're guilty. If ever you have to sign a piece of paper, it usually means that you're admitting you're guilty. Normally, you wouldn't sign such a piece of paper. Not wise. You should always take legal advice anyway. Often asked who are the best lawyers in Patia. I'll tell you who the best lawyers in Patia are. The one that will come out at one o'clock in the morning and deal with an issue like that. Not the lawyer who goes to bed at 10 o'clock and switches his mobile phone off. You know, you have these issues to think of. It's often the arrests can occur in the middle of the night. Uh, the legal advice to us was to, um, to sign them because we needed to get out, you know. There were ladies 92 needing heart medication, people who were going frantic with their relatives, what was happening, no one to feed the cat, you know, all sorts of stuff. Had to get out and we were advised to go, come back the following morning at 10 o'clock to be taken to the in the Black Mariah to the court uh, and that's what most of us did you can always change your plea in a uh, Thai court you say oh yes we signed that we're guilty but we're not really guilty for the following reasons and I think in this case I understand the logic behind the lawyer I signed 
uh, because she said it was a lady she said that uh, it's such an unusual case that I think it's more important you all get out you know <laughs> rather than uh, uh, worry about signing uh, a plea that you can reverse in the morning it's not normally good advice but this was an unusual case when we all reassembled at 10 o'clock in the morning in fact we were not taken to the court and the whole thing did fizzle out but not before you know, the, we become the most famous bridge club in the world for 15 minutes, to quote Andy Warhol. The English press had a field day with me in particular, you know, vice consul, whoever they are, I've never been a vice consul anyway, but there you are, vice consul arrested for gambling, photograph of me taken about 30 years ago looking very glum. Uh, and so nothing actually happened. Bail was returned to most people uh, and uh, it, it looked as if it was the end of it, but not really. It took actually three years before the case was finally dropped. Three years, uh, although we were all out and suffering no penalties, because the Shombury governor got involved because of the dispute between the police and DOPA, as I mentioned earlier, uh, and uh, the public prosecutor in not. John Tien became quite a friend of mine. You had to keep going every three months. Has any, any news yet? No, sorry, see you in three months. It went on. Uh, talk about the 90-day report. It was nothing compared with that. It went on and on for three years. So there you go. You're never too sure. Um, but it, it, it was dropped um, eventually. And so um, the odd thing about that saga, which I've skipped through quickly, you know, you could write a book on it. Indeed, we nearly did. Uh, was the fact we were actually guilty. We were not guilty of gambling, we had uh, not, didn't have uh, the uh, roulette wheel and all the rest of it that the concerned citizen, you've heard about those, the person who reported us to DOPA uh, said she'd seen there, she'd actually was in a relationship which had gone foul with a member of the club and that's the reason she wanted her own back so the concerned citizen would have made a poor court witness she'd have been torn to bits uh, to go to, to revert against it would have been i think uh, uh, necessary to, to, to tear her to bits but it never went to court but the things we were guilty of were for example not gambling but what about the japanese occupation act of 1942 who can tell me about that this said that if there were more than two packs of cards in a room, this meant that gambling was going on. This was an attempt by the Japanese authority at the time in World War II in Bangkok. They weren't actually in charge, but they were sort of vaguely in charge, uh, that tried to improve the moral fiber of the uh, citizenry of Bangkok. This, this, this act is still in existence. Uh, Japanese occupation. We were also had some packs of foreign cards. Did you know it's illegal? to play cards in Thailand if the packs are foreign. They have to carry the government stamp. We knew that, but we had a few packs. It's difficult to get Thai packs, you know. We need 100 packs at a time. Sorry, can only provide 20, all that kind of thing in the warehouse. And so um, uh, it's worth just pointing out that if you're playing cards with a foreign pack at home, that's not illegal, but it is if you, uh, foreign cards are involved. There was also a very strange case, which I'm told by the public prosecutor, still on the table, so I could even be done, and, and the, I'm not an officer of the club, but I was the founder of the club and the current president of the club. We were told we could still be done over up to 10 years for an outstanding offence, which is um, against that someone was seen by DOPA ordering a gin and tonic and paying for it at 10 past two, and you d should know that you were not allowed to, or you weren't allowed to serve or pay bills after 2 p.m. at the time when that was passed. So, you know, when you get involved in these things, the bridge club scandal looks as if it's all about playing bridge and gambling, but many, many other issues surfaced over the next two or three years. And so what are the lessons of all this, for, for, of the Thai law? Well, the main thing, as I said at the beginning, is not to drink and drive. You know, it's worth noting en passant that your insurance also becomes void if you have it. And it's not only insurance. I spoke to a guy yesterday, as a matter of fact, who had a very nasty wound on his leg after a motorbike accident in which no one seems to have been to blame. Uh, but uh, he, he wasn't drinking and driving, but he had no crash helmet. So his insurance policy is saying the bill for about four million 
part. It's a very awkward uh, leg uh, operation or operations he'll need. They're, they're saying at the moment they won't have any part of it. You know, so there's lots and lots of repercussions that don't immediately uh, sp spring to mind. The next thing to do is to keep calm. Not terribly easy. But once you lose your rag in Thailand in any way, you've lost. Uh, so if you can, keep calm. Keeping calm amongst the bridge club members was not easy. Uh, and uh, another tip, if you visit anyone who's incarcerated in the police cells or the prison, although you need permission to go to the prison, uh, never forget to take some food with you. you know, the, the, the food's not so good in the police station. And that's how we managed to keep some of them that were panicking in the uh, bridge club scandal. And managed to, uh, by you know, providing Mars bars, and not that I provided them, but I rang people to provide them. Which brings me on to the next point, always use your mobile phone if you have a legal problem here they won't take it away immediately if at all uh, and you use this opportunity to inform people friends relatives lawyers whatever what's going on where you are you don't know what's happening inform them where you are uh, if you don't um, then you know that leads to a good deal of unnecessary hassle it seems fairly obvious advice but sometimes people don't even think of it don't sign anything without legal advice. It's nearly always a confession of guilt, which is in most cases not a good idea. There may be exceptions, as there was in our case, but you need legal advice in order to do that. And finally, don't suggest to the police the brown envelope. The Thais have an expression, Sin Nam Jai, which doesn't really translate into English at all. Well, it technically means a gift from the water of the heart. It has a number of meanings. It can mean that we are two friends and I give you a gift and you say thank you and don't expect anything in return, that's fine. But if it's from, uh, you should always wait, if corruption's involved, uh, you should always wait for the uh, indication from the person superior to you uh, about maybe paying something. Uh, corruption exists, but uh, it won't exist uh, Sin Nam Jai thus really means um, you can pay, uh, you can give me a gift, but don't expect much in return. Um, if corruption exists in every society, I know that, but it will not, or almost surely not, ever occur here, corruption about prosecutions and so on, once you're in the police station anyway. Once you're arrested, that's it, the bureaucracy takes over, not as it used to be 10 or 20 years ago. Don't rely on Sin Nam Jai. You'll very likely be disappointed and don't rely either on the notion put about by some uh, lawyers, I think, that, that you pay under the table and the judge uh, will be corrupted. It just doesn't happen. The judges, are, if, you, if you knew their benefits they have in Thai society, are not going to risk their careers uh, simply for you. So I think we have to uh, end as we began with Otto von Bismarck. I don't wish to demoralize anyone, but it's important to recognize, A, you have a very low chance of being arrested in this room, but that it could happen. I hope it doesn't, but if it does, the best of luck, and thank you. Yes, you have a question. You have a question. You're going to take questions, Barry? Yeah. Yes, have the water, thanks. Hi, hi Barry, thanks for the good talk. Um, I had two things, one is a comment or a personal and a minor antidote, and the other one is a real question. Uh, so the antidote, uh, the antidote was that uh, a number of years ago I was at the British Club in Bangkok for an engineer society meeting and they have uh, free flowing uh, beer kegs as Brits often do, and uh, I got stopped on one of the major roads by a policeman with a breathalyzer, told me I didn't do very well. He didn't speak much English. He handed me a card about 20,000 baht and prison time, uh, or laminated card. And to your point about not offering a bribe, uh, I, what I did, and it worked, is I kept saying, what should I do? to the officer, what, what can I do, what should I do? And he didn't understand much English, but eventually he said to me, what can you do? <laughs> and uh, 
I proceeded to then drive to Pattaya from Bangkok. So uh, that, that, that's my advice. If, like you say, if you're in the station, you can't do that. But if you're not in the station, don't offer the bribe, as you said. That would be terrible. Uh, because they do have a sort of a crackdown program trying to go on, in my opinion. Um, the other thing was a question. <clears throat> Since I have a, an expired license and Pania is giving months, months in advance for any chance to renew it, can I be arrested by a Navy person? You said the Army can. Can the Navy also? I want to go into their golf courses. <laughs> no, the Army would only arrest you for offenses where the dopa was involved they, they wouldn't arrest you for offenses unless it was on navy territory or unless the when, when, when i instructed went through the navy no, when i went through the navy recently to play golf my friend was with me he had a current license and they took his license and they stood in front of the car with a camera and they photographed his license and my license plate at the same time which i thought was very smart and they handed him back his license as we entered the base so that's why I asked, because if I want to go in and play, and I don't, you know, they, they if, could if still photograph a, my if license. If you had an accident, I, think, I don't think so. It's not okay. to worry about that. Thank you very much. Good morning, Barry. Um, Good morning. I read not too long ago where uh, a person got uh, sued for defamation because he gave a bad review of a hotel. Uh, does that happen often, or is it just uh, that one particular case? Yes, it's, uh, there, there are some, yes. It's a recent uh, law that was passed in the Thai Parliament about the Privacy Act, which is the same act as to why when you look in the Bangkok Post or on other, other social media posts or in other press reports, the face of the accused is often blurred, vaselined out. It's because uh, the recent uh, uh, law, the Privacy Act, has given a lot more rights to people than before. Now, that's one example. Another example is yours, that it can be an offence of slander or libel, according to whether it's spoken or written, to criticise uh, uh, organi organisations or individuals on a very wide basis. And, of course, uh, if I say that the cockroach is uh, in, in, in the soup in a restaurant and put that, unless I could prove it with a cockroach, and even then it doesn't always prove it, I might have, may have introduced the cockroach myself, there can be legal proceedings, yes, there can. But so far, I understand, only been a handful of cases because people are frightened, and if they're in the country, if they can get at you in the country uh, of, of being involved in legal proceedings. Yes, you're quite right. Thank you, Barry, excellent presentation. I was recently talking to a business owner, an American, who was uh, unhappy because Bunglamung has seems to be doing more of a power struggle than City Hall. And I was just wondering if you would comment about the relationship between Patia City Hall and Bunglamung, uh, see, is that a district or Ampur? I'm not the, sure. Yes, it's the, the different. Patia City Hall covers many things throughout Greater Patia, including Naklua. Um, I'm pretty sure that if someone dies in Naklua, I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure if someone dies in Naklua, it has to be reported to the office, Patia City Hall, to get the death certificate. I could be wrong, but it used to be so. And so uh, the uh, Banglamung is not an, an, an equal authority with Patia City Hall, it has specified purposes. Uh, for the whole of Patia and Naklua, such as licensing clubs, awarding you a gun if you're going to apply for a gun license, and various other things. But it's not in competition with City Hall for setting the rules about whether we have fireworks on New Year's Eve, uh, road repairs, and all the other stuff that, that City Hall does. Um, Barry, I, I, I get confused with drunk driving and having a drink and driving. Uh, my experience was I'd had a glass of wine with dinner in Bangkok. The policeman pulled me over, and it was the age-old question, have you been drinking? And I thought, well, I better tell the truth. So I said yes. He gave me a breathalyzer, which he never showed me the results, and said, you're going to jail. It was a Friday. You'll be released on Monday, and it's a $20,000 20, baht fine. Luckily, I was with my Thai girlfriend who spoke Thai, 
And um, he said to her, well, there is an ATM right, right there. And she withdrew 20,000 baht and, and I went home. So it's, it's problematic. What do you suggest if we know we are not over the limit? And yet the question is, have you been drinking? Do we lie? Do we, anyway. Oh, poss poss possibly, possibly lie, or maybe ask to see the result of the breath test. It's supposed to show you that the machine has turned red. <laughs> That's uh, Sim Nam Jai, who paid you 20,000 and didn't expect much in return, right? Uh, hi there, Barry. Um, please, can you, you said something about if you're on a committee, it's illegal if you have, once is okay, but we're in a condominium and where they have a monthly meeting, uh, the expats are there and they're on the committee. Is that illegal? No. I mean, in a, a talk like I gave, I had to rush over, you know, and I said it mustn't be si systematic, but there was a court case about that example, someone serving on a committee for several years, and the judge threw it out. So there is a low precedent, it's not that important. It, as far as we know, it is now clear, insofar as anything's ever clear, that you would, you're not breaking the law if you serve on a committee in a condo as a foreigner. The, the trouble in the past was that where, where committees fell out, about you know how many light bulbs to replace or whether to have a swim pool then sometimes one member accused another a tie would recuse the foreign of illegal working in order to uh, cause embarrassment uh, that appears not to be illegal now no you're all right thank you very much um, I have a question about going to the movies are we still required to stand up during the King's introduction well, there isn't a legal, there never was a law saying that. It was just a, a matter of people doing it out of courtesy. Some people are not doing it now who are ties, but they're nearly always uh, ties who uh, would like to reform the monarchy. Therefore, it's not illegal to refuse to stand, but I would say for a foreigner, it's highly discourteous not to do so. Hello, I have a little question for everybody. Um, simple question. Uh, I need a, a reliable f phone number for the Australian Embassy in Bangkok because I, I've got to renew my passport and I've tried their website and they give they have multiple phone numbers there and none of them seem to work. Can anybody give me a reliable uh, telephone number for the uh, Australian Embassy in Bangkok? Please. Send an email is what we do at our office when we need to contact them. So we just send an email, that's what we do. Does anybody else have a, a telephone number that they can give me? No, why not? Okay, thank you. Okay. Hello, Barry. Um, I've got a question to ask, but something happened to me a few years back. I um, <clears throat> got a piece of land I was going to build on. I had a wall all the way around it, came out from England. Somebody next door built a factory on my wall. And so I looked up the law which said you have to be one and a half meters from somebody's private property. Got talked into going to law with a solicitor. Three years later, we finally get something done. This guy who built the wall never turned up. Eventually he had to because the judge issued a, a warrant that if he didn't. Um, so we had all the hardship barge, it was all in Thai, I hadn't got a clue what was going on. And then the solicitor said, well, that's it. I said, well, what's happening? He said, oh, you've won. Great, I thought. And then said, well, what happens here now? He said, the judge has given a order uh, that status quo. I said, what status quo? And this is what the lawyer said to me. He did not want the Thai person to lose face. I finished up paying this lawyer for three years at 100,000, and even the guy who I took to court wanted to try and claim money of me. So my asking the question is, do you advise as a last resort not to go to court? 
Not as a last resort, no. <laughs> all possible resorts except the last one, not to go to court. You can't, you can't generalize so far. But what no. happened to you is a typical case of the civil court, as I'd indicated in the talk, is not a way of necessarily resolving disputes. They expect you to sort your own out and sometimes give a muddled response. Uh, not always, but sometimes. And you were obviously suffered from that. Question, uh, how to find a good lawyer, a certified lawyer, uh, what to look for, and your comments on I that. I think I told you, didn't I? The best lawyer is the one that comes out in the middle of the night. <laughs> I, I can't really comment on that because I, I, I'm the foreign advisor to our lawyer, and I, therefore I would prefer not to get involved in, in that. Obviously, I have a lot of confidence in the man I work for, but I'm not here as a recruiting sergeant. Uh, not, don't feel able to comment on the strengths and weaknesses of lawyers. Sorry. Thank you for your talk. You started with Otto von Bismarck and you told something. I'm German and I'd like to know again what you said, please. Oh, Otto von Bismarck said, sausages and laws, sausages, you know, yeah. German sausages, Bavaria, sausages and laws have one thing in common. It's better that you don't know how they are made. Ever seen a sausage being made, you would know. Mentioning Otto von Bismarck, from our German friend here, he failed to add Otto von Bismarck is in every supermarket, especially here in Thailand, with Bismarck herrings. All right, wonderful. Thank you for that. <laughs> one, one, uh, one thing about uh, um, uh, drinking and driving, if you have to... The cop stops you and he asks you if you've been drinking. You say yes, then he must give you the, the breathalyzer test. He says no, then there's, he may not, or he doesn't have to. Another question, you didn't meant, you're not the immigration guy, but on a 30-day extension, is that online or you still have to go to, like in the Bangkok? The 30-day extension from a 45-day on arrival, if that's what you mean, 30-day extension is on pilot in Bangkok that you can do it online for expats online or for long tourists, but it has not been introduced nationwide yet. So the answer is you'd have to go to the immigration in Pattaya, but not necessarily in Bangkok. In Bangkok, I, I live in Bangkok, so I've got to find the site. Yeah, you'd, ha you'd have to look at Bang Bangkok Immigration Section 1 or whatever. It's there on the internet if you look, is all I can say. Uh, just, I'm, I haven't looked this morning, so I'm not sure what it says. Answer the questions, pay the money, and that's it, I guess. Oh, no, yeah, we, we can pay online with a credit card and get 30 days extension at some immigration offices. It's a pilot, but, but not every visa. You know, it's complex. You'd have to look. But it's not available in this area yet, anyway. Okay, we do have some in. We do have some information in the, uh, on our website regarding that. But as I recall when I read the article, it doesn't keep you from having to go to the immigration office. It just simply makes it a shorter visit when you go to get your passport stamped. That's right. You can do it online, but you have to turn up at the immigration office actually to... <laughs> Um, thank you. It was. I took notes. Uh, it was a really excellent talk, and uh, it's some of those pieces of information that we hope that we never need to use. Right. So thank you. Uh, we didn't talk much about car accidents. As somebody who drives a car, in the most arguably dangerous, <laughs> accident-prone streets, and the things you see. Um, do you just have to, is the first person you phone your insurance company if you have an accident? Well, I guess so. The important thing, we're talking about the law this morning, and the police will only show any interest in a car accident, I think, if there's an injury or a death. Just your two cars colliding and an argument and broken glass, they, they won't bother about that by and large. So it would be a question for insurance companies, yes. If you're lucky enough to find the other person has insurance, a lot of people, uh, of course, drive uninsured here. The police will keep away from it, by and large, unless there's injury or death. Uh, the other question I had is, I, I sometimes get asked to teach dancing, and it's like, you know, mm, illegal. Dancing. Yeah, yeah, I used to teach dancing, yeah, partner dancing that. in Australia. And, um, but I often wonder, how do these musicians get away with 
playing in all these different venues and f as far as I know usually they don't have work permits well the, the one the ones I know there are some Filipinos for example who go around uh, 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 and they have uh, what are called uh, volunteer work permits uh, but they're not given in this province they're given in another province but uh, th 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 there are some who have work permits and some don't but it, it depends whether the police choose to enforce it or not there isn't always a clear answer I'm afraid it is illegal to do it on a systematic basis and I suspect they're being paid who would go around uh, clubs and restaurants performing for nothing you might say but therefore it's illegal the question to ask is whether it's enforced maybe the hotel is very prestigious uh, if it is a hotel maybe they have close connections with the authorities you know there's no clear answer. It is technically illegal, but then all prostitution is technically illegal. You know, so you've got to ask the question, as I tried to briefly, what, 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 what is likely to be prosecuted and what is not? Uh, probably not in the case you, you give, but you never know. The other question that, uh, sorry. I want to get one question. <laughs> oh, sorry. On your left side, Barry. Only one answer, too. <laughs> Hi, Barry. Thanks for the talk. Um, my question is about uh, last wills and testaments. Uh, does the bank account that you designate someone, if, if it's a Thai person, does that name need to be uh, coordinated with the name that's in your will? Because uh, I want to validate something that someone told me, that if you don't go to the bank and fill out what we call in America the uh, designation of beneficiary, DOB, uh, with the bank in Thailand, then there could be troubles after you die no. with the will? I've never known that be trouble. Uh, there is a form, to, all sorts of forms to fill in after the person's died, but as long as the, the uh, will is in order, and as long as the Thai judge has issued probate, that is, he stamped the approval for the executor to do all functions, the bank, in every case I've ever known, will produce the money, if that's what you're asking, to the right beneficiary, provided that, uh, you know, um, uh, you wait a while while various bureaucracies are performed, but in my experience, they're all automatic, not, 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 not an attempt to stop you getting the cash. The beneficiary can act after the death, if that's what you're asking. Uh, uh, several weeks ago, I was in the Bangkok Padia Hospital under a condition in my room. And when it comes to discharge, they said I cannot get discharged because I have COVID. All right, so I have COVID. They treat me in hospital. Okay, for one week, I come to get discharged. The Thai doctor in charge of the patio area say I cannot get discharged because I still have residue. So one month, two weeks later, I did give me shot every day, vaccine every day, every day. Now I cannot walk. You understand? I cannot walk. Uh, all the dangers of the vaccine, I make copies, I put over there. And many, many. You think you're okay? Later on, it can bite you in the ass. Okay. Thank you. And one other thing. If they not a wife, I go have members personal assistant. I need a personal assistant who speak English for relations with uh, American affairs. Thank you. Yourself. Well, I had I had further questions about pornography in Thailand, but I'll have to let them go for now. So, uh, thank you for a wonderful morning, a wonderful talk, and I think everybody went away with something to think about. So, a round, big round of applause. <laughs> Wait, don't go away, Barry.
Thank you. I have, personally, I feel uh, a lot more, you know, if something, if shit goes down, I, I sort of know what, what, what to expect to a certain extent. By the way, I 